6 p.m. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before I call the marbles up, uh, Ken and I are going to take a moment just to kind of set the stage for this presentation. Um, you know, before we call them up, uh, we want to talk about um, what we do here at the high school. At each academic <coughs> quarter, we gather our students to reflect on the important themes and messages. This past quarter, our focus in the building was on the importance of resilience. Our presentations were divided in, into three sessions. Two were on March 21st, the half day we had here. Um, session one was building resilience through mental strength training, and session two was building uh, resilience through the dopamine impact. Um, these sessions emphasize the significance of mental resilience and the impact of overcoming challenges and adversity. Additionally, um, we talked about this at the last board meeting, and I think Alexa has a piece of it in her report tonight. On March 27th, um, we had the privilege of having Chris Heron um, complete an assembly here and also at Tile, where he shared his, his inspiring journey of overcoming addiction, a powerful uh, testament to resilience of the human spirit. Throughout these presentations, we emphasize that resilient individuals demonstrate mental toughness, emotional strength, and the ability to persevere through challenges without uh, being overwhelmed by them. And it's now my pleasure, and there are a couple of familiar faces, um, to call up uh, this month's marvels from the high school. First, I would like to invite up Alexa Beams. She's a, a 12th grade student. Jacob Russell, just kind of keep that focused here. Um, our 11th grade <laughs> student, Matthew Chen, our 10th grade student can come on up, and then Abigail Danowitz, our 9th grade student, can come on up. <clears throat> These four students are um, the top academic performance, uh, performers in their respective grade levels. Achieving at such high levels of consistent, uh, I'm sorry, achieving at such high levels uh, consistently requires immense resilience, facing academic rigor, managing time effectively, and overcoming obstacles along the way. They have shown remarkable determination, strength, and character in pursuing excellence in their studies. Their exceptional dedication to academic excellence amid the challenges has been truly remarkable and inspiring to everyone else in the building. For this, they are, they are our Montville Marbles. Congratulations. Once again, thank you. Um, in addition to those four, I do have one more. Um, I would like to recognize Colin Wall. Um, he is not here right now. He's out playing uh, the cross game, so I just wanted to speak briefly on him. Um, again, it's a testament to his resilience and unwavering, unwavering commitment to his education. If anybody in this room was superstitious, I recommend you plug your ears right now um, as I read this next sentence. But um, college, uh, Colin is a senior here and uh, a senior here at Marple High School, and today has not missed a single day of school. Um, and let's not forget how Colin started his high school career out um, during the hybrid model, and that data is also included in. Um, in this representation. So, like I said, unfortunately, Colin is not here tonight because he's out um, participating in the cross game, but that level of dedication, especially in, in um, the area of attendance, is, uh, truly shows his, um, his resilience, and um, we just wanted to recognize him for that, too. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce Mary Hillman to the board of education, as Mary makes her way up here. Mary's worked in the Palmer Building for two years now, serving in the role of student 
community liaison. Um, and honestly, she's proven to be one of the best hires I think I've ever made. Um, I asked some of the staff members to share some comments about Mary. Um, so here goes, Mary. One staff member said, since the second they started working at Palmer, it was clear to them that you were a vital member of, this, uh, of the staff. Should they commented that you arrive early every morning to greet students, you provide them with emotional support, and you are so adored by the students that we use you as incentive for students to earn time with you. As her co-worker, she's all, you're always full of solutions, enthusiasm, and, is always, and are always willing to listen. Another staff member said, Mary's a team player and a stabilizing force. Her sincere compassion for students is coupled with an insistence on their accountability. This tough love approach is, is actively sought out by many of our students and leaves Mary as one of the most popular and effective staff members. It goes on and on. A lot of staff have things to say about you. Mary is always available and willing to help students and staff. Whenever anyone asks a question or requests assistance, Mary happily helps us. She is an asset to our community. Another staff member said, dependable. That one word describes Mary. No matter what is asked of her, you can count on her getting it done and getting it done well. Everyone always comments that the secretary is the heart of the building, but Mary's role definitely is parallel to that of secretary. She takes on whatever ta task is asked of her, no matter how big or small. Her hard work and commitment do not go, no, do not go unnoticed. From being one of the first to arrive and one of the last to leave, staff and students alike respect and are grateful for her. One more staff member. Mary is the lighthouse of Palmer. She is a light for both students and staff during tough times, and her office is a safe harbor for all of us. She helps to do everything she can so our school can run as smoothly as possible, which is hard some days, but she makes it better. She wears every hat there is and does them justice every time. Mary is what genuine love for community looks like. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without her. She's our backbone. And probably the most important comments from a student. Ms. Hillman is a positive and helpful teacher. She is a good person to talk to when you are feeling down or if you are having an issue. She has helped me countless times and I'm grateful to have her in my life. She is very pretty <laughs> and really smart. I can't wait to see her again next year. So Mary, it's our pleasure to honor you as the Mothwell Marvel for Palmer for developing positive relationships with students and staff. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna have uh, School Resource Officer Kirsten Todd come on up. Uh, by now, I think we've heard about um, the mozzarella stick heard around the world um, at Tile, um, but we did have an incident and uh, we did recognize Jace Adams, who cannot be here tonight. Um, I think he is out saving lives um, tonight. But Jace is a Boy Scout um, and seventh grade student at Tile that um, lunch just started um, and <coughs> immediately recognized that his friend who was here was struggling, swallowing um, some food and he jumped right up into action. Um, he started giving the high look. He also called Officer Todd over who came right over and together they were able to dislodge um, the food item out of um, the student's mouth. The student was so thankful, um, very happy, safe. Um, everyone was um, thrilled with, with the response. Um, a lot of attention deservingly so on the news, on the newspaper. Um, so we wanted to recognize Chase just for that um, quick action, being a role model. Um, we have not served mozzarella sticks since that incident, but I'm confident <laughs> that um, we can, we, we did, okay, good, no, we had no incident. Um, and I also, um, and so Chase, we're gonna give that award too, but I also wanna thank um, Kirsten Dodd for her action, and you know, when we talk about school resource officers, um, we really want them to just be, you know, gross into the school community. Um, Kirsten is a full-fledged middle school staff member. Um, she jumped right in, and um, she's beloved by everybody, staff and students, and such a great fit. I mean, it's a home. Um, so we're so thankful to have her and her help and her assistance with students, and um, together just make a great team. So to have students, to have staff um, react that quickly, and, um, and Chase is here. All right. <laughs> We went to the wrong school. Uh, <laughs> your timing was perfect. Chase, come on up. I was just saying all these nice things about you. Here is Chase. 
cares and Jace is uh, he's, he's going to sign autographs if you would like. <laughs> too, but um, just I mean again, just uh, <coughs> tremendous representatives of the Tileway and our school community and helping others. And um, I know both of these um, individuals. The last thing that they like is attention um, and notoriety, and it's pretty impressive to have that maturity at this age. So um, we just appreciate leaving it in. And for that, there are Michael Marbles this week. So <laughs> for not being here the last two meetings. <laughs> Employee benefits to objects 510.2792, subcontracted services, transportation at $95,000, 5 point, or excuse me, 584.2792, transportation reimbursement, $20,000, and 321.1200, special education purchase services, $85,000. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, thank you very much. All right, second item will be 14, which will replace the German. Add executive session to the end of the meeting for the purpose of discussion of pending litigation involving the Board of Education. A motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you, board. That's all I have. All right, citizens' comments. Agenda items only. Citizens' comments? Day paper, I want no questions. Okay. All right, citizens' comments. Thank you very much. Letters and communications. I have none. I do. Uh, Kim Doyle reached out to me. She's the assistant director for TVCCA. I uh, wanted to congratulate uh, Tile Middle School for an event they had there. They were very pleased. Um, just very nice things to say about Tile Middle School. Uh, I'd be glad to uh, send you a copy of that email if you'd like to see it. But I thanked her and I said I would convey that at the board meeting. It's always nice when someone in the community reaches out and says thank you and they appreciate uh, our staff. I think that's very nice. Okay, approval of the consent calendar. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. What should I update, Kathy, please? Okay. Um, as the fiscal year winds down, we are projecting the budget based on trending in history in the following categories salaries, employee benefits, purchase services, tuition supplies, property, and other to make recommendations for transfers to close out the 23-24 budget. The projections for salary count taken as a whole are trending within budget and currently are reflecting a surplus. However, to complete this projection, we are looking at more trending and calculating the payroll accrual for the period ending 6-30-2024 to prepare the purchase order. We will continue to project these salary accounts based on contracts, remaining school days, and calendar days until 6-30-2024. Some of the salary accounts are currently reflecting shortages 
uh, such as substitutes and custodial helpers, while the others are projecting surpluses because of the turnovers and vacancies experienced in the fiscal year. Employee categories are trending with a surplus. That's part of the transfer that was discussed tonight um, or put on the agenda. We are currently uh, recommending a transfer of $200,000 from these objects to cover projected shortages in purchase services, contracted transportation, and reimbursement for transportation, uh, reimbursement transportation. The overages in these objects are based on lower than anticipated cost for pension, unemployment insurance, and health insurances. Uh, purchase service reimbursement, subcontracted transportation, and reimbursement for transportation are projected to show the shortage at year end, which will be offset by the transfer that is being recommended. The shortage in the purchase service special ed is related mainly from students attending magnet schools, charters, and outplacement uh, costs uh, that are outside their tuition cost. The projected transportation shortages are reflected are related to the number of outplacement runs, along with parents being reimbursed for providing transportation to their students. Tuition objects are currently within budget with a surplus of about $28,000. We will continue to monitor these accounts because of the volatility. It should be noted that we were just advised that there was an outplacement that occurred and has not been accounted for in the surplus. During the year-end process, we will be reconciling outstanding purchase orders and making adjustments as, nece as necessary. Supplies, the schools are currently completing purchase orders for supplies and textbooks for the next school year. This is necessary in order to ensure a smooth opening for the next school year and is consistent with past practice. Because the spending is controllable, it is anticipated that these expenditures will be within budget allocation as a whole. We have locked the heating oil, diesel, heating oil at $2.96.43, diesel at $3.04, gasoline at $3.02, which includes ta uh, taxes for next fiscal year. Uh, property and other categories are trending within budget. There may be additional um, transfers for your consideration in May as the year end closeout of the budget continues. Questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Not in reference to what you read, but I had a question in reference to the fund for the um, lunches that don't have money, because I understand that currently is like negative twelve thousand uh, dollars. As um, parents not paying for right. lunches, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's that high. I don't know that's what the exact number. That's what Carol told oh, Carol Johnson told you that. Okay, she yeah. would know. Uh -huh. But okay. I was just curious, what happens to that at the end of the year? What happens a lot of times it will go to an activity account or we may have some expenses that we put through through the, the Board of Ed because the school cafeteria program cannot absorb those losses. It's an illegal write-off even though it's a bad debt for that um, program. They can't absorb that loss so somehow it has to filter through the Board of Education. Assuming it's a write-off. I mean there could be <coughs> credits that are carried over to next fiscal year if they're still in the school district but um, that's usually what happens. Okay. Any other questions? Wow, quiet board tonight. Okay. All right. New business. Set date of June 4th, 2024 to recognize 2023-2024 retiring teachers. We have several retirees and um, we'll be talking about any board members that can come. We go to visit them in their schools, hopefully with their students present, and just recognize them with a little gift. Um, if you are able to join us, we'd like to start at 8.30 here at Central Office and we'll travel together and carpool as people want to. What day of the week is June 4th, please? Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday? Tuesday. Oh. It's Tuesday. 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 Where will we carpool to, Lori? Um, we will be going to three different buildings, so we'll just start okay. here and then sort of progress around. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. June 4th. Thank you. Consideration and action to authorize the superintendent to apply for inter district cooperative and state and federal grants for educational programs. Uh, Superintendent. This is uh, standard language we adopt every year. 
uh, this empowers us to submit applications like the security grant, the HVAC grant, the title grants, uh, IBDA grant, without bringing each of those grant applications to you for approval. All set? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are all policy, which has been addressed, but the superintendent can brief us as necessary. Consideration and action to revise policy 4111.3, increasing educator diversity as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. Second. Superintendent? Uh, that is uh, just a, re a policy that's been rewritten to reflect the new requirement of having an increasing educator diversity plan, which I then explained to you at the last meeting. Thank you very much. Any further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Consideration action to adopt policy 4117.6, exit surveys as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. Second. Board. This is a uh, policy that aligns with legislation requiring that teachers who voluntarily leave their positions complete an exit survey. That exit survey, the results at the end of the year are reported to you, they are reported to the state, and the state's purpose is just to understand why teachers are leaving positions, if they're going to another teaching position, if they're retiring, or if they're leaving the profession, and I think that's what the thing they're really trying to understand, that teachers are choosing to leave to do something else. Obviously, that's not the limit of okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none. Motion passes. Thank you. Consideration action to revise policy 5111 admission placement as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. Second. Uh, this reflects the new age of five by September 1 uh, to enter kindergarten and also the requirement that students who withdraw who are 17 must um, withdraw to adults and they can't just withdraw from school completely. Um, the state has legislated that they have to go into an adult ed program to complete uh, their high school education. Uh, so those changes are summarized in that policy, the added form for the key waiver request, and a form for the withdrawal of the 17-year-old that have that withdrawing to adult ed. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, thank you. Consideration action to adopt policy 6142.104, play-based learning as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. Second. Thank you. And this also reflects new legislation. The requirement is that play-based learning must be in place in grades K and 1. I'm sorry, PK and K. And in grades 1 to 5, we must allow it so the teachers want to incorporate play-based learning. Then the district can't say, no, this is your schedule and you don't have time for that. Um, the district will is also required to provide PD and play-based play learning, and we'll be doing that on May 2nd as a beginning for teachers. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, consideration action to revise policy 6161.1, selection of instructional materials as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. Second. Lori? And this is simply revision to a form that's part of that policy requesting um, reconsideration of instructional materials so a parent, there's a process a parent would use if they wanted us to take a look at instructional materials uh, thinking that it was inappropriate for some reason. And the form now requires more specificity regarding what's inappropriate and why they think it's inappropriate. More specificity what? About what's inappropriate in that material and why they, they believe so. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Consideration action to revise policy 6148 FAFSA. FAFSA. I'm going to say this right. <laughs> FAFSA. Completion program as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. And this is um, 
making completion of the FAFSA mandatory for graduation from high school or for uh, graduation from the adult ed diploma program by statute again, unless the parent or the school has completed a waiver for a student on their behalf. This is required in legislation. We haven't seen what that waiver form will look like yet. This doesn't go into effect uh, for as a graduation requirement, obviously, until next year. So we're waiting more information about that waiver process. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Consideration action to revise policy 9323. Construction of the agenda as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. Second. This is just addition to an existing policy requiring that all supporting documents that are shared with the board <coughs> uh, be posted on the website prior to the meeting, and that's a practice that we put in place at the beginning of this year, but just getting it formalized in our policy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none. Motion passes, thank you. Consideration and action to revise policy 9324, advanced delivery of materials as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. Second. This is very similar, just rewritten policy about electronic delivery of the agenda and all supporting materials for board meetings. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? And none, motion passes, thank you. 7K, consideration and action to set the 2024-2025 tuition rates as follows. Lori, would you like to cover those? So all of the rates that are specified here, and you can see on the agenda, were um, rates that were set based upon the existing rates for this current year and um, a 3.2% increase based on the February 2024 CPI. So that's what we do every year, look at CPI, adjust to our tuition rates. We, it's important to note that these rates are not used often. We do not accept tuition from individual students' families to attend Montville Public Schools. We do accept tuition students um, from other towns that where the town seeks to place them here. And that most frequently happens for special education students at Palmer because we have a program that not all, all other uh, districts have at Palmer within our public program. It would also um, be in, place, in effect for DCF placements. The original tuition rates were set many years ago, and each year we just adjust those rates according to CPI. It's important to note that students who are special education students who have specific needs, these might not be their exact tuition rates because based upon the services that we need to provide, we may need to charge more for those students. I'll make the motion to set the 2024-2025 tuition rates as described by the superintendent. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. 7L. Consideration of possible action to transfer $200,000 from objects 204-222, employee benefits to objects 510.2792, subcontracted services, transportation $95,000, 584.2792, transportation reimbursement $20,000, and 321.1200, special education purchase services $85,000. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I think the business manager made this pretty clear what the uh, intent is here, so no comments, all right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Hearing none, motion passes, thank you. Information items. Okay, we have uh, basically two of them. Public hearing on general uh, government budget. April 24th at uh, 2024 at 6 p.m. And public hearing on Board of Education budget, April 25th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Both of those public hearings are held in the auditorium um, on those evenings. So hopefully we'll have some members in attendance, not only for the Board of Ed, but hopefully for public. All right. Uh, 
Committee and liaison reports, policy. Before we move on, can I just go back and correct the objects on that? I don't, it was it 204 to 222 on the employee benefit? 204 to 222. 222, yes. I didn't hear it right then. Sorry. Yeah, no, good. Okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, committee and liaison reports, policy. Uh, we have no meeting this week, uh, this month. Thank you. Education evaluation? No meeting. Thank you. Communications committee? Uh, the regular meeting of April 4th was canceled and has been moved to a special meeting on April 22nd at 6 p.m. in the Library Media Center. The purpose is to meet with the district's parent advisory committee to discuss the district's budget priorities and to inform them of the process and to also welcome them to the Board of Ed public hearing to be held on April 25th at 6 p.m. Anything else for them? No, that's good. We all encourage you to. I would highly encourage this, uh, judging from the environment that we're facing. Uh, I would highly encourage people to come and just uh, understand what's happening. So hopefully people will. Uh, Montville Education Foundation. I was not able to attend the meeting. Uh, they met on Monday evening. I know that they worked on setting the, the uh, date and uh, work for their, their upcoming concert. Okay, thank you. Um, learn. I have a meeting this Thursday, so nothing to report right now. It hasn't changed since last month. Thank you. Cave NSBA, Carol? Uh, they um, did not meet. They moved their meeting until the uh, fourth week in April. Thank you. What will you service the Earl? A um, couple things they did, they did meet last Thursday. Um, they're having a penny drive this year. They do an annual penny drive. This year, it's going to be seed money to refurbish the water tower at the intersection of 163 and Maple Avenue. And the Youth Action Council, they're working on the dangers of energy drinks and organizing a wool cafe with the middle school. And our next meeting is May 9th. And what are they doing with the water tower? What's that? What did you say about the water tower? I'm sorry. They're going to refurbish it. They're looking to refurbish it. That tall light? Yep. Okay. The tall rock the water tower? Oh. Right by you Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. great. Wow. How about just like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. I have an idea. Let's all meet with, like, you know. <laughs> no, I guess that's not the plan. All right, we'll move it on. Hey. <laughs> All right. Student reps. All right. Well, at the end of March, team captains for spring sports attended an ECC leadership conference at NFA. There, they collaborated with other captains from schools to discuss their role as a leader and discuss and share team management management strategies for their teams. Outdoor track has had a positive outlook for their season with already earning 18 state qualifiers at just invitational meets, so they haven't even started their regular ECC season. On the same note of success, girls lacrosse won their first game, and baseball and softball have had a strong start. As Mr. Alves mentioned, in March, MHS and Tile welcomed a visitor, a former NBA player, Chris Heron. I never thought it would be possible for our whole school to go into the auditorium and be silent, but everybody was focused on the presentation, locked in. And for me, it was the most engaging assembly I've sat through, especially for one discussing substance abuse. And it was personalized, so even if you walked in there thinking it had nothing to do with you, you could at least relate to the stories being told and like have some understanding of what was going on. And in the advisory session before April break, students had the opportunity to further discuss the assembly with their advisors and fill out a survey to provide feedback for administration. The National Honor Society is working on their main project of the year, so with the goal of generating funds to purchase new clothing for Montville students who otherwise have to use, not have to use, but rely on donations from staff, um, NHS is putting on a car wash at the community center on April 20th, this Saturday, and they will also be hosting a pickleball tournament on May 5th at the Camp Oak Dead Courts for an afternoon of food, music, and fun, which is actually involving some of the bands at MHS. Where did you say that car wash was? The car wash is at the community center right across the street. Thank you. And then if you haven't heard about it already, Tile students strive to embody the Tile way. To achieve such, they practice the core values of respect, responsibility, safety, and pride to become well-rounded citizens. 
And there's a few achievements I'd like to share that are really representative of the motto. So seventh and eighth grade students who demonstrated growth in their Smarter Balanced assessments from last year received, were celebrated at an ice cream social. And the first winner was drawn from the bi-weekly raffle of students who have yet to receive a disciplinary referral this year. And finally, on the last day before April break, the Student Council returned to the Senior Center for a spring tea party, <coughs> once again creating those important connections across generations, just like they did at the bingo in February. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll start off by saying our boys tennis team um, got three wins in a row, and so that makes our record 3-0 and right now, which is very good. Um, Unfortunately, the one match we had against Killingly last week um, was actually canceled while we were on the courts. We were warming up and we could see the ominous clouds in the distance and then like in half a second it just started hailing and we were actually all huddled in the bathroom and our coach came in and told us it was canceled. But next week we'll have our doubleheader against them and hopefully we can uh, take home another win. Um, student government is preparing for the spring, spring pep rally coming up and is also planning to put on the color run, which is set for late May. We haven't been able to do this for a while, I believe due to COVID, and our student government president has been very eager to get it started again, so we're really excited to have that going again. Um, the music department is also, have, also has a few events coming up. The choir and band classes are playing for the elementary schools this Wednesday and Friday, so that would be tomorrow, um, and are also having a trip to New York City this weekend with a lot of sightseeing and some Broadway shows and a lot of fun stuff happening with them. Um, I agree with a lot of what Alexa said about the Chris Heron presentation. I think he was very engaging. How he handled the people that were being disruptive, I think he handled that very well. He was a really good speaker and I think he got his point across well too. I think it also helped that the assembly was longer and I think that it's, it's hard to take that, to, that much time away from class but I think having a longer assembly makes it more well developed and more thorough and more of like a complete idea if you get what I mean. Um, it, I think it made it much stronger to have a longer and more well thought out presentation. That's all I have. Thank you. Principals. Um, I'm going to speak here at Montville High School the first day before our spring break, um, April 4th. Barbara Mann, Carol DaCosta, um, down in our culinary wing, they put together an Italian night. Uh, there was also an individual by the name of Colin Daly. Um, he had a little acoustical playing, I think I said that correctly. Uh, and basically, if you can envision our culinary wing, uh, two of the rooms um, had tables, they were well dressed, um, and our culinary kids started the process. These are our advanced culinary students, started the process beginning of the week. Uh, Mrs. Mann actually brought her mom in to make homemade pasta with the students. Uh, that was part of the lasagna. Um, I think it was bruschetta, right? Bruschetta Hurst was the appetizer, and then served with Caesar salad as well as lasagna. Um, the, so the invite went out to the senior citizen, uh, the senior center, um, and just talking to Mrs. Mann when we returned after vacation. Uh, you know, there's things she would like to do different next year, and one of them is making more of a senior night compared to just reaching out to that little community center. But it was uh, well received, the food was outstanding, uh, and it was a great day here at Mount High School. Thank you, you can invite us next year. Like we, that's <laughs> part of the routine. <laughs> 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 Sounded good, sounded good. <laughs> they feed me all week and I'm no, that's, that's <laughs> not very good. All right, who else? That's it for the principals? Um, sorry, yeah, just a couple events we have planned to help make the transition for our fifth graders. We all have scheduled uh, assemblies with the middle school uh, program, and we're going to each send our, our fifth graders up there. We also have a fifth grade outing coming up shortly after that to get the fifth graders to get to know one of the Wrightsburg activities. We'll have that at Camp Parkers. Not Camp Parkers. Camp Park. Murphy specific, um, I just wanted to invite anybody that is interested in coming next Thursday. Our social worker has put together um, a, what we're calling a family night, but it's a, really a way to connect the community and resources that are available within the community that parents may or may not know about. Um, he's invited and um, we'll have representatives from Unit, United Community and Family Services, uh, the Montville Youth Service Bureau, and as well as Montville Social Services, Kathy Doherty Peck. Um, it's going to be 
similar to an open house, but it's going to be um, started with um, a, a craft activity and some games to in, you know, encourage them to be there as a family. There's going to be some food provided. And then um, once the, the talking part, which is going to be brief, <laughs> um, happens, uh, we're going to have um, some high school um, honor society students that are going to be there to do some engagement with the kids in the gym. And then um, that they can come back into the cafeteria and have uh, you know, open house style conversations with those different um, representatives. Um, so that it's not like a time constraint with the Little League games and things like that are going on. So that's next Thursday um, from 5 to 6.30. The only other thing I wanted to mention is um, the week before vacation, um, Montville, I mean, uh, Murphy School um, had its own hatchery. Um, it was it was unbelievable. Our, our teacher and um, one of our um, special education teachers, Mrs. Carpenter, um, set up in the art room um, a hatchery, eggs that, um, and uh, the whole school was connected because she was doing all of her art projects centered around um, the, the life cycle of the egg. Um, and then the kids, when they were coming in, could go in and see. Um, they set up a live feed so that during the day, if an egg were to hatch, um, it would just be an email to the teacher, and if it was timely, they could put it up on the smart board and the kids could watch the egg as it was hatching live. It was, it was pretty awesome. And the timing couldn't have been more perfect because a majority of the hatching that actually occurred was like Thursday into Friday, right before vacation. So I can safely say that they're all, the chickens that hatched are all alive and well on a farm. <laughs> I'm being taken care of, so. <laughs> but it was really awesome. And it was, it was just great to see the kids, you know, coming in each day all excited about the, the live chickens. Keeping <laughs> of the trimester from each classroom. And it, it just, it was a nice way to come together before vacation and we look forward to our last one where our, let's see what our kindergartners' talent will be. It takes them a year or so to develop their talent, but they'll showcase at the end of the year. Nice. And we have in a, in a few, just under a few weeks, our sixth graders go on the Salmon River to release um, the salmon eggs that they um, raised this year in their classrooms. Um, so the whole sixth grade will go and release that to the Salmon River. It's a really nice field trip. Um, unrelated at lunch that day, we have a salmon lunch plan. Seriously? <laughs> no. That would be traumatizing. Uh, but we are excited about that. And um, I thank Alexa for her um, board briefs. And um, our counseling department spearheaded a positive um, behavior reinforcement incentive plan. Um, like Robin mentioned tonight, perfect attendance. We're celebrating students that have perfect behavior. Um, and over 300 of our 509 students have not received a discipline referral for the entire year. So um, we, we brought them all out in front of the school um, right before break. We had a Go UConn chant going, and they all got a certificate. Um, and then we are, they're entered into weekly, bi-weekly drawings, and they get to pick a um, reward out um, that they're all really excited about. So it's a lot to be celebrated. Well, so I'll just add, too, that our... Uh, Partnership with Waterford Country School is continuing to be outstanding. It's money well spent that the, the board uh, invests every year in. Um, Pathway students go twice a week, and it's it, there's a lot of benefit for them getting outdoors and the <coughs> child goes yeah. too right, yeah. once a week. But it's it's money really well spent. There's a lot of value in that partnership we have with Waterford Country School. Excellent. A lot of nice stuff from you guys tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, clearly they read my report because I was going to share all of them. <laughs> um, well, last, do you happen to be there? Uh, well, well, they've already done it for me. I don't have to. No. Last month I spoke a little bit about the preschool screening we were holding and um, just wanted to let you know that the staff screened about 40 students, preschoolers, and out of that they have pushed forward, I think, four for referral for the special ed process, evaluation process. Um, as Liz mentioned, there is a new teacher at the Pathways program at Murphy, and while she certainly has had her hands full adjusting to the job, she's done a really great job. She's incorporated some experiential learning opportunities, such as the, the Pathways at Palmer and Tile. Um, she happens to have live on a farm, and she is a certified petting zoo. So she's brought the goats in and the bunnies in for the kids to see. 
she actually did a project where they tapped maple trees and then she brought the syrup back and boiled it down and the kids were able to go into their general ed classes and share that experience with their general class which really gave them a sense of pride and, and built their leadership skills. So I thought that was really <coughs> cool. And then of course the chicks. Um, other highlights throughout the district, the Transition Academy is um, starting a new unit on healthy relationships as part of their social skills unit and that will cover all types of healthy versus unhealthy relationships, boundaries with families, friends, and um, romantic relationships as well. Um, Brian Burns is uh, again starting to do his, um, I'll call it, vegetable growing seedlings. The, sta the students start seeds and then they sell the plants for vegetable gardens. And uh, Palmer and Tile enjoy their experiential learning at Waterford Country School. You were kidding. I wasn't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Superintendent. Okay, hello. Um, I wanted to give everybody an update on the educator evaluation support system that we're required to put in place for the beginning of next year with all our teachers. Over the last couple of years, we had some flexibilities that we were able to operate under because of COVID, with the understanding that the state is expecting every district to submit a plan um, to be utilized next year. So we have a professional development and evaluation committee and we actually began this work at our administrative retreat. Um, so quite some time ago, but it really picked up in speed in January once you know we got the model plan and the non-negotiables that are required to be in the plan. Um, the plan is really rooted in the belief that the best way to promote growth for students would be to encourage and support growth with um, educators and to make it very personalized, collaborative, reflective, um, and based on continuous improvement. So we did a lot of work about around rubrics. We're really excited that we have personalized rubrics in terms of our support staff. Um, so they'll be able to get um, specific feedback um, for them to grow as well. Um, our goal right now is to complete this over the next couple of weeks. We're very, very close. And since this plan would normally go to the e and &E committee because it's based on instruction and administrative practices, it would also go to the policy committee um, because it's about educator evaluation regulations and state statute. So we thought it might be best that we present it to the full board at the next meeting if you're in agreement with that. Um, state assessments, uh, favorite time of year, um, begin in the next week. Um, so all students in grade three through eight will be um, participating in the Smarter Balanced Assessments um, throughout the month of May. Um, the AP window for our high school students begins the first week and, I'm sorry, throughout the rest of April and May, and then AP begins the first week of May, and then science for our 11th graders will be following that. I was going to speak about Chris Heron, but I think we've heard him a couple <laughs> times. So I will just say that um, that was put on by Barbara Lockhart, Montville Youth Service Bureau, so we were very grateful for that. It was a home run. Um, they, Chris Heron put on differentiated um, presentations for the middle school students versus the high school students. It was really about hope, and in his words, it wasn't just about drugs and alcohol. It was about self-worth, com confidence, and self-esteem. So it really was a powerful message for our students, and I was thrilled to hear that um, you both felt the same way. And I will close with um, something that was really awesome to see, and I know a couple of our board members were there as well, but Oakdale had their science fair. Um, fifth grade students um, did some research and presented some pretty cool science projects. And um, the teachers, just a shout out to Jen Lathrop, Megan Jackson, and Ashley Montgomery, and all the others that supported them, did a really good job because it was the first time I walked into an event in years where 
it felt pre-COVID because there were so many people. Like I couldn't find a parking spot, you know. It was like crowded in the mm -hmm. hallways. It was just a really good feel, so kudos to you. It was, it was really a nice um, and impressive turnout. So. Thank you. All right. I kind of want to skip me and end on this like a really positive vibe here and mine is less positive. Um, I want to talk about the budget, where we are with the budget. The capital request, um, first, Wills and I attended a finance committee meeting last Tuesday and at that meeting uh, we did have an opportunity to explain our capital requests. The finance committee expressed uh, that they would like to remove the ARPA funding from the Palmer Roof Project, concerned about timing of that, so they would use that for another purpose, and therefore in increase the Palmer Roof Project capital cost by the $65,000 that was the, uh, we were gonna take from the ARPA funding that was um, put, put uh, for the use of for the skylight replacement toward the roof. They also talked about going out to bond to cover several town expenses, including a town hall roof, and um, thought that rather than having the Palmer roof replacement be part of the capital request, that it might be part of that bond request, as I believe would be the track of the MHS track resurfacing. The finance committee expressed support for keeping the buses, the vans, the tile wireless project, and uh, the roof separator in the capital request. And, um, I don't know at this point what the mayor has included in his recommendations for our capital request, but that was the summary of the discussion of the capital at the um, finance committee meeting last Tuesday. Then for the operating budget, Kathy and I met with the mayor this morning to discuss his proposed budget. It's my understanding that he has distributed his budget to town council members, um, but he wanted to meet with us personally, which we appreciated but it wasn't great news. Um, he is proposing in his budget a 2.5% increase for the Board of Education from the town's appropriation for 20, FY 2024, which is $200,000 less than what we actually were given to spend because in addition to our appropriation, we were given $200,000 from the cannabis funds. So this would be a reduction in what we're asking for. We also, I also did say, is would there be the possibility of allocating cannabis funds to the board next year? And he said no. His recommendation is that those would be um, allocated to the police department next year. So what does that mean for us? Uh, the mayor's budget sets that Board of Education appropriation at $44,343,086. That is a reduction of $1,188,790 from the board's budget. That's a big reduction. Um, the mayor um, expressed the difficulty in trying to um, come back from the town's use of ARPA funds and you know, put things back in their budget. We expressed that we have obviously those same issues here that we felt that we had done a really responsible job of spending that grant so that we created the smallest possible funding cliff, but that 2.5, a, a, a increase of 2.5% from that original appropriation was not something that could be accomplished without very, very significant reductions to the district budget. Um, just to put in perspective that almost 1.2 million are the total of our new requests um, which are, I, I believe, are very necessary expenditures. That was the high school special ed teacher, the BCBA, and the uh, $100,000 towards full-time paras. That total, the new things, are only $305,000. So of, that's only a quarter of that, about $1.2 in cuts. Um, I don't believe that a 2.5% increase is reasonable based on the needs of our students uh, and based on our steadfast commitment to meeting those needs. I tried to express in the letter that I wrote to the town council, and I shared that with you, that we didn't put wants in our budget. We only put needs in our budget, and we were already taking some um, significant risks in terms of not fully funding the magnet tuition in our budget, and we had already reduced two teachers. Um, so, as the finance committee and the town council review the general government and education budgets, We'll know more about the final appropriations. I think it's really very critical that community members participate 
they make their priorities known so that the finance committee and town council and mayor you know, get a sense of what the people in the town of Montville want to support. I can tell you since our budget level funding supplies has legally mandated increases in special ed funding that cannot be reduced um, and has increases for contracts that were negotiated in good faith that cannot be cut, it's likely the reductions would need to be made from staff uh, to meet a cut of this magnitude. Um, hopefully, as the process continues, we'll get more favorable news from the Finance Committee and the Town Council, but it's important that everyone stay tuned, listen, um, and make their, their priorities known so the town can, can grapple with uh, d difficult decisions. And you know, the mayor expressed to us very clearly the increases in expenses in the town and his sense of a mill rate increase that would be tolerable to the community. And you know, those were the things that he was working to try to meet. Um, we did try to express to him, um, as I said to you, that this, this won't be easy for us at all. And you know, try to have him understand our next step. So stay tuned. This, you know, there's a lot changes from the, the mayor's proposed budget to the actual approved budget, and we just need to be actively engaged in that process. That's all I have. I should have, I should have started with, a, I ended with someone like, feel good thing, but I'm sorry. Chris Heron was really great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, citizens' comments. Citizens' comments? Citizens comments. All right. Well, I don't want to end on a bad note, so I'm going to take it. Um, so, the superintendent and I have reached out multiple times now to the council chair and finance to meet with them. Um, we want a meeting with. We want a meeting with them. We deserve it. Uh, we are a separate entity in the town. Yes, but so far we get crickets in return, and we want to meet with. Councilor May, Councilor Lathrop, and Councilor Jaskowitz, the full finance to express our budget. So the superintendent's going to ask again tomorrow uh, if we could please get that face-to-face -face time for that. Um, that's all I'm going to say about the budget. I think the superintendent covered it well. Hopefully we'll get that meeting. A couple things I want to share, though, like the Chris Heron event and Unified Basketball. So for me, you know, I just stand there and I, I, I like to observe a lot of things. And that, a lot of that stuff doesn't happen organically. And I think people don't get that. Like, to put an auditorium full of kids and turn the lights off and have them be quiet and watch a movie is pretty impressive, right? It takes people to educate people to do that. It just doesn't happen that way. And I think the Unified Basketball was probably the, one of the best things I've ever attended. And again, that's all efforts of staff at, at the, at the, in the public schools that take care of the children that we serve. And I, and, I, and I just cannot emphasize that, and I would like you to share that with the community. The little things that sound simple, but are not really that simple. I mean, it takes, it takes an effort to make all these things happen. And uh, for that, uh, as your board chair, I'm, I'm extremely proud of the efforts the administration does, staff. And uh, you, know, you see the fruits of your labor out there on the football field, or whether it's in the auditorium, and uh, hats off to you guys. So thank you very much. All right. Um, future agenda items. Well, we know what we're going to talk about in the future. That's obviously the budget. So okay, thank you. Um, all right. Item uh, 14, which we added on executive session. Motion to go to executive session. Second. Yes. Any discussion? All right. We're going to invite. Diane and the superintendent. Thank you very much. <laughs>